Crystal Palin has her own blog, and on her blog, she decided to sound off about free contraception in several states in the U.S., but particularly Washington State. So she's outraged that IUDs are being offered to teenagers, and she claims that kids as young as 10 years old are getting IUDs without parental consent. Here's what she writes. <laughs> She says, do you remember what it was like to be a 10-year-old? I remember being an unabashed tomboy concerned with playing outside and acing fifth grade, but life isn't so innocent and carefree for some 10-year-olds in Washington State. All right, well, she's the arbiter of innocence and, you know, being yeah. a good teenager. It was uh, only a couple of years later when she got pregnant. Only a couple of years later, okay. She continues, she says, it is crazy that the government is offering a controversial form of birth control that can have serious lifelong side effects to 10-year-old children, but then to do all of this behind a parent's back is simply outrageous. Now, she didn't offer any statistics uh, regarding 10-year-olds getting this form of birth control, probably because 10-year-olds aren't getting this birth control. However, there were statistics indicating there were two 11-year-olds who got the birth control, but the vast majority of teenagers are between 16 and 17 years old, okay? Now, keep in mind that the free contraception in Washington State has uh, decreased the teen pregnancy rate by 40%. That's between 2009 and 2013. Also consider the fact uh, that abortion decreased 42% in the same time period. Why is that happening? Because teens have access to birth control. And the reason why... <laughs> and the reason why uh, about 25 states, 26 states to be exact, have decided to do away with parental consent for teenagers seeking contraception is because officials realize that seeking parental consent serves as a deterrent. The teenagers are not going to go ask their parents for it, so they're unlikely to ever get the birth control they need to prevent the unwanted pregnancies. Now, if you wanted to reduce teenage pregnancy, who do you think you would give birth control to? <laughs> uh, their parents. <laughs> Can you believe she's still talking about birth control? I mean, it's like she is arguing against birth control. Yes. That's like you arguing against sweating. <laughs> <laughs> but at least I don't want to sweat. I know. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> but you were a teen sweater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And remember, this is the woman who got paid, when she was a teenager, uh, $262,000 to speak out about abstinence-only education. And this was after she delivered her first child as a teenager. <laughs> So out of wedlock. Out of wedlock. That was, of course, before her second child, out of wedlock. Yeah. So I that, think the first one was immaculate. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. The second one was fairly ordinary. Yeah, she got that. Very, very. <laughs> what I like is that the, the, the conservatives always rail against single parents, and they rail against, they say, the inner city urban community. Their fathers aren't president, preg, uh, present, and that's what's wrong with Detroit. George Will famously wrote a column I saw him saying on ABC with George Nuffalumpagus, that <laughs> he said what's wrong with Detroit, and he gave us some crazy statistic about how many single uh, moms there are in Detroit. And so I was like, oh, so what's wrong with Detroit is there's too many Bristol Palins in that fucking city. <laughs> it's just incredible that she speaks out against people using birth control. I mean, you have the statistics that prove that these policies work, and you want these policies, especially when you consider that the country is currently spending $11 billion a year on unintended pregnancies, okay? So this is a public policy situation. And also, you don't want teenagers ruining their lives by getting pregnant when they don't want to get pregnant. It's that simple. And if you care about abortion, well, a good way to prevent abortions is to give people contraception. Yeah. Turn, turn, so, turned out, her, didn't her mom abort her term as governor a little quickly? <laughs> <laughs> So, look, Anna, Anna makes a great case uh, based on the numbers and the facts. Um, but, you know, we, we're lectured by these right-wingers. I mean, how long? My whole life, probably your whole lives. You've been lectured, you've been talked down to by these right-wingers, telling you how to live, telling you how to be moral. Oh, don't have uh, kids out of wedlock. They told Detroit, they told all of us. Then they turn around and do it, right? 
So I'm not calling them immoral. They're calling Bristol Palin immoral. All my life they told me that a person like Bristol Palin is the most immoral person there is. That has sex out of wedlock, that has kids out of wedlock, and that breaks all the morals and laws they told me to follow. I'm not calling Bristol Palin immoral. They called Bristol Palin immoral for decade after decade until it was Bristol Palin. Right? <laughs> so now, okay, I get it. She's a wild hypocrite. And then, of course, as soon as they do something wrong, they say, oh, don't hit me, don't hit me. They, they always remind me of Rowdy Roddy Piper, for those of you who used to watch wrestling. Right? He hits somebody over the head with a chair. The minute they turn around, he goes, oh, don't hit me, don't hit me. Right? And so, no, 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 sad day for you. If you're going to make $262,000 being a raging hypocrite, then I'm going to ask you to shut the fuck up about birth control. <laughs> yeah.